Arkansas CDL General Knowledge Test. Question 1. Which of the following is not true about an escape ramp? A. May turn uphill. B. Is of no use if you are traveling too quickly. C. May be made of soft gravel. D. May be located a few miles from the top of a downgrade. Answer B. Escape ramps are designed of either soft gravel, turning uphill, or both, to slow down drivers who experience brake failure on a downgrade. Regardless of your speed, look for one of these escape ramps, which has usually been designed to help drivers in even the most desperate situations. Question 2. How many tie-downs are required for a 20-foot load? A. 3 tie-downs. B. 1 tie-down. C. 4 tie-downs. D. 2 tie-downs. Answer D. The rule is that you should have one tie-down per 10 feet of cargo, and you must have at least two per load, regardless of the length. So for 20 feet, you would have two. Question 3. Which of the following should you do when confronted by an aggressive driver? A. If you can safely do it, call the police from a cell phone. B. Ignore rude gestures and refuse to react negatively. C. Avoid eye contact. D. Do all of these. Answer D. When an aggressive driver is trying to confront you, do not give them the confrontation that they want. Instead, seek police, peace, and safety. Question 4. How many hours of sleep does the average person need per night, or risk accumulating sleep debt? A. 6 to 8 hours. B. 7 to 8 hours. C. 6 to 7 hours. D. 8 to 9 hours. Answer B. Sleep debt is a dangerous condition in which missing sleep adds up until you risk falling asleep at the wheel. People are often surprised when they find out that getting only 6 hours of sleep per night triples your risk of accidents. Question 5. Which two special conditions indicate that you should downshift? A. Starting down a hill and finishing a curve. B. Starting up a hill and finishing a curve. C. Starting down a hill and entering a curve. D. Starting up a hill and entering a curve. Answer C. Downshifting before starting down a hill allows you to take advantage of engine braking. You should downshift to the gear required, which is usually lower than the gear required to climb the hill. Downshifting before a curve improves stability and ensures you will have the power available to accelerate out of the turn. Question 6. What constitutes a hazardous materials placard? A. Signs on the inside of the vehicle that remind the driver what he is carrying. B. Signs on the outside of the vehicle that identify the hazard class of the cargo. C. Signs that help tax collectors determine how much to tax a hazardous cargo. D. Signs that warn the public to stay at least 1,000 feet away from the vehicle. Answer B. Hazardous materials placards are four regulated signs on the outside of the vehicle that identify the hazard class of the cargo for those who need to know, like emergency service personnel or those who load and unload the cargo. Question 7. To help you stay alert and safe while driving, you should A. Drink coffee if you get drowsy. B. Have a whiskey to brace yourself. C. Roll down your windows to get fresh air. D. 
Avoid medications with warning labels. Answer D. Be careful with medications that warn you they may cause drowsiness. If you have a concern about prescribed medications, speak to your doctor. Do not ever try to make up for sleepiness with coffee, fresh air, or especially alcohol. The only cure for being tired is sleeping until you are rested. Question 8. A hazard is A. Something you can easily avoid. B. A road user or road condition that could be a possible danger. C. Something you can safely ignore. D. Something you must stop for. Answer B. A hazard is something that could go wrong, but it won't if you've been vigilant. Question 9. You should inspect wheel bearing seals for A. Broken leaf springs. B. Twisted axles. C. Tears. D. Leaking. Answer D. Like many seals on your vehicle, the most likely problem with wheel bearing seals will be leaking, so you should look for moisture around the seal and drops or a puddle underneath it. Question 10. Which of the following statements about retarders is correct? A. When your drive wheels have poor traction, the retarder may cause them to skid. B. Retarders help slow a vehicle and reduce the need for using your brakes. C. You should turn the retarder off whenever the road is wet, icy, or snow covered. D. All of these answers are correct. Answer D. While retarders can help reduce the need for your brakes, they can make it more likely for you to skid in inclement weather or whenever your wheels experience poor traction. Because of this, you should always turn off your retarders in poor weather. Question 11. You should place the starter switch key into your pocket while you are performing the pre-trip inspection because A. Someone could steal the truck. B. Someone could start and move the truck. C. It could damage the starting mechanism. D. Of all of these. Answer B. When you are performing the pre-trip inspection, you do not want someone, such as a co-driver, to start your vehicle while unaware of your location and accidentally injure you. Question 12. How long will you lose your CDL driving privileges if you are convicted of a second DUI offense in either a CMV or your private vehicle? A. One year minimum. B. Life. C. 10 years minimum. D. 5 years minimum. Answer B. Due to nationwide drunk driving laws, a second DUI offense, regardless of the vehicle being driven, will cause you to lose your CDL for life. Your first offense is a wake-up call and a chance to get help, but your second offense is going to mean unemployment. If you get a DUI, seek help before you lose your salary and your future. Question 13. If you are traveling at 55 miles per hour in a 30-foot vehicle, you should leave how many seconds of following distance? A. 6 seconds. B. 7 seconds. C. 3 seconds. D. 4 seconds. Answer D. The formula for the following distance is 1 second per 10 feet of vehicle, and then add an extra second if you are traveling over 40 miles per hour. So for a 30-foot vehicle going 55 miles per hour, you should leave a following distance of 4 seconds. Question 14. How many seconds does it take for a normal tractor trailer to clear a double track? A. 
more than 15 seconds. B. 10 seconds. C. More than 30 seconds. D. 14 seconds. Answer A. You can expect it to take more than 15 seconds for a regular tractor trailer to clear a double track, and 14 seconds to be safely over a single track. Question 15. While driving at night, which lights should you use as often as you can? A. Emergency flashers. B. Novelty lights. C. Low beams. D. High beams. Answer D. When driving at night, you should be using your high beams to expand your field of vision as often as possible, as long as it is safe and legal and you will not blind any other drivers. The rule of thumb is to put them on as long as there are no approaching vehicles within 500 feet. Question 16. Total stopping distance is a combination of A. Braking distance plus stopping distance B. Perception distance plus reaction distance plus braking distance C. Reaction distance plus viewing distance plus braking distance D. Reaction distance plus braking distance Answer B. Total stopping distance is a combination of your perception distance, how far the vehicle goes from when you see the hazard until your brain processes it, reaction distance, the amount of time from your brain informing your foot to take action until your foot actually does something, and braking distance, how long it takes to stop once you press the brake. Question 17. What is a common cause of tire fires? A underinflated tires b overinflated tires c cold tires d all of these answer a underinflated tires and dual tires that touch are the most common causes of tire fires question 18 what will help a drunk sober up a. Coffee. B. A glass of water. C. Time. D. Fresh air. Answer C. There is no fast answer for getting the alcohol out of your system since it is inside your bloodstream. Coffee and fresh air will not do the trick. You must wait until you are sober or risk losing your CDL if you drive. While country songs say love will help, we recommend you don't risk it. Question 19. What might happen if you swing wide to the left before you turn right? A. Someone might try to pass you on your right. B. Someone might try to pass you on your left. C. You might damage your leaf springs. D. All of these could happen. Answer A. If you swing wide, a driver may try to pass on your right while you are turning. Instead, make the turn with the rear of your vehicle as close to the curb as possible and turn widely without allowing them room on the right to pass. Question 20. Where should you place your warning devices? If you must stop on a one-way or divided highway. A. At 20 feet, 50 feet, and 100 feet toward the approaching traffic. B. At 50 feet, 100 feet, and 150 feet toward the approaching traffic. C. At 100 feet, 200 feet, and 300 feet toward the approaching traffic. D. At 10 feet, 100 feet and 200 feet toward the approaching traffic. Answer D. On a one-way or divided highway, you want to stretch your warning devices out, but still have them close enough to the vehicle that it makes it clear you are stopped, 
devices at 10, 100, and 200 feet accomplish this goal. Question 21. What is the gross vehicle weight, GVW? A. A vehicle's maximum weight rating specified by its manufacturer. B. The total weight of a single vehicle and its load. C. The total weight of the vehicle, towed vehicles, and the load. D. All of these. Answer B. GVW is the simplest of the vehicle weight explanations, standing for just a single vehicle and the load that it is carrying. Question 22. Which of the following is most likely to get stuck on raised railroad crossings? A. A single axle tractor pulling a regular trailer. B. An empty moving van. C. A single axle tractor making a return journey empty. D. A low slung car carrier. Answer D. Emptier vehicles ride higher, which is a problem for overhead clearance, but can be a boon when it comes to clearing crossings. A filled moving van might have trouble, but an empty one should be fine. On the other hand, a filled low slung unit, like a car carrier, may be in trouble. Question 23, how can you start moving without rolling backward? A. Engage the clutch before removing your foot from the brake. B. Apply the hand valve. C. Put on the parking brake whenever necessary. D. Do all of these. Answer D. If you have a manual transmission vehicle, partly engage the clutch before you take your right foot off the brake. Put on the parking brake whenever necessary to keep from rolling back. Release the parking brake only when you have applied enough engine power to keep from rolling back. On a tractor trailer equipped with a trailer brake hand valve, the hand valve can be applied to keep from rolling back. Question 24. Do empty trucks have the best braking? A. No. B. Yes. C. Yes, but only on wet surfaces. D. Yes, but only if the truck is newer than 1998. Answer A. Trucks brake best when they are being used as they were designed, to carry a properly balanced load. It might seem that empty trucks should be able to stop sooner, but they actually have greater stopping distances because they have less traction. Question 25. Signs of distracted drivers include A. Drivers having conversations with passengers. B. Individuals listening to loud music. C. Individuals driving at a consistent speed above the speed limit. D. Vehicles exiting the roadway. Answer A. Whether the conversation occurs through a cell phone, text message, CB radio, or within a car, it still requires a driver's attention and may cause them to be distracted. Individuals playing their music loudly or driving too fast may be displaying mediocre judgment but they do not display the regular signs of distracted drivers. Question 26. It has just reached freezing. Which of the following areas is, are slippery? A. A bridge. B. A wet-looking road. C. A shaded area. D. All of these. Answer D. Once the temperature dips down to freezing, some areas of the road will start to freeze. The first to go will be areas without sun, shaded areas, and bridges. If the road appears wet, that could also herald the arrival of black ice, a thin layer of slippery ice through which you can see the actual road. Question 27. If you double your speed, 
How much more distance will it take to stop? A. Twice as much. B. Five times as much. C. Three times as much. D. Four times as much. Answer D. When doubling your speed, your stopping distance increases significantly to almost four times as much as before. For example, increasing your speed from 15 to 30 miles per hour will increase your stopping distance from 46 to 148 feet. Question 28. What is the definition of a pull-up? A. Pulling your CMV forward, when you are in the process of backing, to reposition your trailer better. B. Pulling up to a curb to pick up a load. C. Pulling up short before a necessary stop to leave more room for emergencies. D. Pulling forward at a railroad crossing as needed so that you can see whether a train is coming. Answer A. A pull-up is pulling forward to reposition yourself so that you can back your trailer at the best angle. You should do this as often as you need to back in a straight line if possible. You do not need to pull up short for any reason, nor should you ever pull forward at railroad crossings to get a better view if signals indicate a train is coming. Simply follow the signals to cross when safe, as you may not be able to see a train until it has almost arrived. Question 29. What is the best way to figure out how many seconds of following distance you have? A. Text a friend and tell them to text you back in 10 seconds and see how long that seemed to take compared to how far you traveled. B. Wait until a vehicle passes a shadow or landmark and count the seconds until you pass it. C. Use the stopwatch on your phone to try to determine how long before you reach a mile marker after the car in front of you appeared to reach it. D. Get one quarter closer to the car in front of you, and then back off again. Multiply how long this took you by four for your following distance. Answer B. Count how long it takes you to reach the landmark after the car in front of you by counting like such, 1001, 1002, and you will have your following distance in seconds. All the other methods are dangerous and will not give you a true following distance. Remember, following distance needs to be increased in traffic, bad weather, for heavy vehicles, or at higher speeds. Question 30. Which of the following determines the safe speed for going down a steep downgrade? A. The total weight of the vehicle and cargo. B. The steepness of the grade. C. The road conditions. D. All of these. Answer D. There are several factors that help you decide upon a safe speed for going down a steep downgrade including its steepness, length, the road and weather conditions, and your vehicle and cargo weight. Thanks for watching. Please comment like and share.